Hey everybody, my name's Scott. I built this giant Jenga set and storage box and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Check it out. I'm running all these boards to the thickness planer. Now this isn't a necessary step, but when I got these from the home center, I noticed that the quality was a little suspect and I wanted to make sure they were all a uniform thickness. I'm clamping a stop block to the fence of the chop saw and that makes repeated cuts of the same length quick and easy. This lumber usually comes with pretty rough ends, so I just cut them off. And if I find a knot or other imperfection in the piece, I just cut around the crappy wood. Throughout the day, I kept hearing this beep. There's that beep again. In the shop. I can hear it to this. Never found what it was. And it is entirely possible I was losing it. So after I had sort of emotionally moved on from the beep mystery, uh, I just uh, kept uh, cutting the board, running it against the stop block, making the cut, rinse and repeat. After a while I noticed that my chop saw was cutting kind of funny and so after doing a little investigation I found this piece of hardwood left over from a previous project uh, in the insert uh, wedged in there so I just used my Leatherman to fish it out. I've had this Leatherman for over 15 years. It's seen two tours in Iraq. I carry it with me every day and it is by far the most useful tool I've ever owned. I can turn that off now but because I'm just doing the same thing over and over again but if I happen to catch a uh, wood flying all over the place. Hmm, I wonder if that was a premonition. You want that one? Yeah, it was the break on that, but that was not the same sound I heard from earlier. Ooh, somebody's getting all fancy with their camera shots. My wife has wanted to get involved in some of these projects. Uh, being on camera, not so much. I thought she was a pretty good sport. No. At least smile. No. That is my beautiful wife, Desiree. Hi, Desiree. I would like <laughs> to not be known as your wife until your YouTube channel is successful. Ha! <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. For the sake of my marriage, please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. But in all seriousness, it was a lot of fun having my wife Desiree uh, in the shop making stuff with me. And it's uh, a really cool way to spend time with one another. Oh, you made it. Ha 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 ha. Okay. I wanted to explain why when you're using 2x3s, it's important that uh, you make your, um, your boards um, exactly 7.5 inches long. This is a 2x3, it's 7.5 inches long. If you were to cut these boards longer, I cut these boards at 8 inches long, and you stacked them up, 3 like that, and then 3 like this, they wouldn't line up. So they wouldn't, three of them wouldn't be square, wouldn't uh, form a perfect square. Um, and it's the same thing if you try to make them a little bit shorter. Uh, I made these seven inches long. And it's the same thing. You take three of them, you stack them up, and you can't stack them square. Uh, there's a little bit of room on this side and uh, room underneath here. So when you're making them out of two by threes, make sure that they measure 
seven and a half inches long. Whenever you're in the shop, make sure you've got the right protective equipment. Goggles for your eyes, hearing protection for your ears, and a dust mask. Here I'm just uh, sort of retrofitting a shop back on an oscillating spindle sander to take care of some of the dust. And I'm not really trying to remove any material, I'm just trying to smooth it out uh, to make it a little easier for my wife, who's in the next room, uh, hand sanding. My wife spent quite a bit of time in the next room uh, using a sanding block, hand sanding each individual block so it was nice and smooth. Thanks, hon. I stacked up all the pieces on the table and took some measurements, and I transferred those measurements onto a half inch piece of plywood. The plywood over to the table saw, then I would bring it back over to the chop saw to cut them to the length. Yeah, notice how effective my hearing protection is here. I'm just using a scrap piece here to help me uh, line up the longer pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to go over and actually cut the uh, shorter pieces that are going to have the handles over on the table saw where I'm measuring now. I can turn that off now, but because I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, but if I happen to catch a uh, wood flying all over the place. I'm using my mother-in-law's Delta table saw that does not have a rising knife installed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called kickback, which is very, very dangerous. Okay, let's watch that again in super scary slow motion. So kickback occurs when the wood pinches together after it's gone through the blade and it makes contact with the blade again and that's when you get kickback. And the way to prevent that is to install a writhing knife or use a splitter and that is definitely something I'm going to be doing in the near future. Okay, so once I was done checking my shorts, I brought that piece over and cut it out on the chop saw. And here I'm just test fitting those pieces. And I made them longer, or taller actually, so I could uh, put handles in them. The way I'm doing that is I'm using the hole saw to cut out two holes. Uh, I have both pieces clamped together. And then I'm gonna take it over to the other side of the workbench and I'm going to cut out the remainder of the handle using the jigsaw. Don't forget your eye protection. After that, I brought it over to the oscillating spindle sander and I'm just smoothing out the rough edges. I'm making some marks here where the long side of the box meets the short side of the box where the handles are. And then I'm using this paint can uh, to sort of mark out this curve uh, just as sort of a decorative touch. And then I'm going to use the jigsaw to cut that out. Having the pieces clamped together just makes it easier to make sure that both pieces are the same. Yep, handles. And back to the oscillating spindle sander to take out all the rough edges. You definitely don't need one of these machines, but it makes things go a lot faster. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the jigsaw to cut a relief cut in the long part of the box, and that's to make grabbing the blocks themselves easier. And one more trip to the oscillating spindle sander and we'll be ready to drive this. I'm using a brad nailer here just to temporarily hold the box together. Um, I didn't use any glue, but you certainly could and it would just make the box a lot stronger. I set the box down on the sheet of plywood along two edges and I'm tracing a line on the other two edges on the inside and that'll give me a mark to cut along on the table saw and the top saw. So I'm using the table saw to make the long part of the cut 
and then I'll bring it over to the chop saw to make the short part of the cut. Now, the chop saw was about an eighth of an inch too short, so I had to break out my handy dandy Leatherman to finish off that cut. Now I'm taking that piece that I cut off and I'm sort of dry fitting it to the box. Um, it's a little bit too wide still, so I'm gonna take that over to the table saw. I'm just gonna tap the fence ever so slightly and take off just a tiny bit at a time uh, until I get the perfect fit for this bottom. It's always a good idea to cut things a little bit oversized because you can always go back later and shave some off, but if you cut them too small, it's almost impossible to add wood. I'm going to hold everything together temporarily again with some uh, some brad nails uh, and then I'm going to come back in with some inch and a quarter uh, wood screws and these are star drive bits. I highly recommend getting the star drive bits. They're so much easier and so much better than Phillips. Uh, it takes a lot of the frustration out of it. I'm going to drill some pilot holes here and that just helps uh, get the screws in but it also prevents the wood from splitting. And I'm also going to use uh, this countersink bit and that just helps the head of the screw to seat in nicely and also prevents the wood from splitting. test fit and it looks like it fits yay not too shabby wife approved and the last step for my end is just going to be to lightly go over everything uh, with some sandpaper. Uh, just want to make everything nice and smooth and prevent uh, splinters. You know, I got to say this was a fun project and it was really cool uh, working with my wife and having her help out. Um, and again, I learned a lot. I'd never made a box before. That was just one way of making a box. I'm sure there are better ways out there, but I was just kind of experimenting, and uh, I think it turned out uh, pretty good. My wife is using an acrylic paint and these really cool uh, stencils she found at a craft store. Uh, they're sort of peel and stick, and they're reusable, so you can use them to personalize uh, any wood project. Now, this whole project only took about a day to complete. I used six 2x3s, which are fairly inexpensive, and I had a just a scrap piece of um, half-inch uh, plywood lying around, uh, which is pretty inexpensive at the home center if you buy them in uh, handy panels. And some rad nails and some inch and quarter inch screws and that was about it. I utilized the uh, chop saw but you could easily do this on a small table saw or even use a circular saw. You can also use a circular saw to cut down uh, sheet goods if you don't have a table saw. And I used a oscillating spindle sander but you could definitely do this by hand it would just take a little bit longer. Hey everybody thanks for watching. Uh, this was a really fun project that everybody can get involved in. If you like the video give it a like, subscribe, share and feel free to leave a comment. And remember if we can do it you can do it. I think that was good. I don't want to.
might do another take of that.